This is the Pole Voima, a 190 millimeter travel electric mountain bike based around the Bosch smart system with a 750 watt hour battery. It's fully 29er and 190 mil travel on the front and the rear. So the unique thing about this bike is the way it's constructed. It's fully CNC machined. And as you look around the bike and you look closely at it, you can see all these CNC machine lines and it has a really unique style to it. It looks different to pretty much anything else out there that I've seen on the bike market. You can see all the CNC machined lines in here and the bike is actually CNC'd in two parts. So it's actually two halves of the bike and then it's bonded together using aerospace grade bonding material. You can just about see just across the top where the bike is bonded together. You wouldn't know unless you were told. This bike has protective film applied over the top and this is a factory option. It just means it's designed custom for the bike and it's like a nice kind of thick material and just protects it and just, yeah, makes it a bit easier to look after, a bit easier to clean. And riding it around, it actually draws so much attention to it. I mean, it looks so unique. Look at it. It's got these beautiful curved tubes. Check out this pivot and the chainstay. No chainstay, basically. It's a tiny, tiny little link here and you've just got one piece of CNC'd aluminium connecting the rear wheel to the linkage. And what I love about it is everything looks beefy, burly, and well-engineered. Like these double bearings here, these are huge Enduro Max bearings that we've got in here. And there's two bearings in each of these pivots. It makes most other bike linkages look like chocolate buttons compared to this. So it should be able to cope with the wet, nasty, gritty British and European winters. And like we're in now, we're going into this kind of season where it's wet very often. And I think this bike is built to last. Looking at it, it looks like it's well-engineered and well-built and can take an absolute beating. When you get the bike out of the box and build it, it just looks absolutely fantastic. It's the type of bike that I think does polarize opinion. Some people look at it and think, I don't like that. But when you see it, in the flesh. It does look like a stunningly designed, well-engineered machine. It just looks like an incredible piece of engineering and I really like the look. I think it looks unique, it looks different, it looks brave and it looks bold. But that's just the design and how it looks. What is really important is how the bike rides. So over the next few days I'm going to be testing it in some trails, some big mountains, some bike parks and I really want to understand how this bike rides because I'm a massive fan of long travel electric mountain bikes. I really think it makes sense when you've got a motor and you've got a steep seat angle like this and big travel, I think it could be the bike that can do absolutely anything. Fully built bikes are available for around 6,400 euros plus local taxes. Mine is based on a full build kit with some customizations to bar height and stem length. This bike weighs 24.7 kilos with a burly build and it's running a 2023 190mm Zeb Ultimate and a RockShox Super Deluxe Airshock on the rear. It's got the 85Nm Bosch Gen 4 Smart System, the head angle measures 63.5 degrees and it's got a super steep 80 degree seat tube angle. The bike has a 455mm chainstay and a bottom bracket height that's quite high comparative to other e-bikes on the market. The bottom bracket height is the same height as the wheel axles. The bike is made of 7075T6 aluminium, which Pole claim is nearly twice as strong as competitor bikes. Pole offer a five-year frame warranty and it's also passed the level five EFBE tri-test, the highest independent strength test. So it's rated for DH, free ride and extreme jumps. First up, how does this bike climb? With its high bottom bracket, steep seat tube angle, punchy Bosch Gen 4 motor, and decent length chainstay, it should be pretty capable. Time to give it a proper test and climb up a mountain. As it turns out, a combination of ultra modern e-bike geometry, rear suspension kinematic, and sensitive and powerful Bosch Gen 4 motor result in a climbing powerhouse.
compared with some grippy tyres, I found this bike could climb more than I've ever been able to before. Climbs that are challenging on other bikes I've tested become no match whatsoever for this bike. It crushes climbs. Its traction going uphill is unrivaled, and with the decent amount of clearance on the bottom bracket and some short 160mm crank arms, the bike will allow the rider to conquer crazy challenges. I should add that I found the bike pretty comfortable to just sit down and pedal along. With 50mm rise bars, it felt like a bike that I could just ride in the saddle for long periods of time. I don't think this bike is reserved only for advanced riders either. As crazy as it might seem, I actually think that if you just wanted a bike for cruising, leisurely trails, or even exploring, this bike would be a good option. So with the steep seat angle, the long wheelbase, the 455mm chainstay, what it means is on the bike I feel quite, quite central on the bike. Also, if you look at the geometry numbers, it does look fairly aggressive and it looks like a massive long bike. And I thought when I saw it on paper, it might feel really big and really long, but actually it's almost the opposite because the steep seat angle positions your weight forward. It does not feel like a very long, unwieldy, just a cumbersome bike. It feels like I'm nicely positioned and nicely balanced. And because of the geometry and the steep seat angle, it just means on the climbs, you can just power up with hardly any effort in maintaining the bike's balance. The front wheel is planted on the floor and it doesn't want to lift up and you can climb some just ridiculously steep things. And this is the best climbing bike I've ever ridden out of anything. The combination of the punchy and powerful Bosch motor, the superbly planted geometry, decent sized chainstay, sea angle, just means you can climb ridiculous things. It is brilliant at going up. Well, what goes up must also come down. With 190 millimeters of suspension beneath you, with 29 inch wheels, there's not a lot to phase the Voima. Straight line descents can be plummeted through with ferocious velocity, with acres of support provided by the frame. Although I didn't find the shock offered total buttery smooth on the initial part of the travel on the rear, and the Zeb doesn't quite match the sensitivity offered by the Fox 38 E-tuned, and I did wonder what difference the coil shock might make, so that's definitely something that I'm going to be trying next. But the amount of sheer support offered through the suspension kinematics and the frame, and the bottomless travel, is only rivaled by full-on downhill bikes. Now, I haven't actually timed it yet, but I would not be surprised if this is the fastest bike down technical descents that I've ever ridden. It's super composed and stable, and that means you feel confident and you can trust the bike to absolutely send it. So I have found that I use a different technique slightly to get the bike to turn in the tight and twisty corners. Pedals level on this bike in the corners seems to make it tip in quite quick, potentially quicker than any other bike because of the bottom bracket height. The bottom bracket height is actually the same height as the axles. So when your pedals are level, you're sagged slightly into the travel, but you can tip the bike easier through the tight and twisties as opposed to if your pedals are down like that because of the uh, kind of forces that you're placing lower down and because of the raised bottom bracket height, it does feel a little bit more difficult and you do need to use a little bit more body weight to uh, actually get the bike to turn. But I found when the pedals are level in the tight and twisties, you can really tip the bike in extremely quickly and it feels quite agile. I did fear that the bike might be quite slow to turn because of its long wheelbase and high bottom bracket height. So while the high bottom bracket height gives real benefits in terms of climb in and, and clearance underneath. I've found that pedals level is a kind of technique that I've needed to use to get it to tip in. And it does turn really quick. You can maneuver it really quickly through the tight and twisties. And that's one of the reasons that I wanted to take it to my local trails that I know really well, just to find out how it feels in those rooty tight sections when you're kind of weaving in between the trees.
pedaling platform on the bike is really supportive. I was thinking it's 190 millimeters of travel, so you might get quite a lot of pedal bob under power. But what I've noticed is that it's got a pretty high anti-squat number, especially at the sag point. And what that means is as you're pedaling, the bike is very, very taut and very kind of supported, and there's hardly any pedal bob whatsoever. It almost feels like it's got a, a shock that's locked out on it. And I'll give you a demonstration. So I'll pop the sag marker just right down to the bottom. I'll get on it first. And then if I ride up here, try and look at this section of the bike and how little bob there is, let's give it a go. And as I'm riding in this pedaling position, for a 190 mil travel bike, it to me feels like the shock is locked out. There's enough sensitivity on it to soak up some of the just little roots and rocks and things, but it feels very efficient. And I initially thought a 190 mil travel bike might feel quite um, spongy and bobby, but it feels very taut. And it just helps keep the bottom bracket raised as well through some of the sections that you want to be careful that you're not going to get rock strikes and impacts on the bottom. So feels very tight and very supported. And effectively it's got 100% anti-squat, which means there's very, very little pedal bob. So it keeps the bottom bracket high. It's a very, very efficient pedaling platform. Like I said, it almost feels like the shock is completely locked out. It's really good. So the question is, have Pole created a downhill bike that can climb as good as anything? Or is it the other way around? A true mountain goat that can descend just like a downhill bike? Well, arguably it's both. And I believe this bike is genre defining. It amplifies what e-bikes are great at, going both up and down and everything in between. The Pole Voima is incredible. So what a bike. Uh, I, I like this bike so much. I'm, I'm going to buy one. I'm going to spend my own money on one of these bikes because for me, it ticks so many boxes. It does so many things. So I'm going to go through some of the things I really like. There's a couple of things I think could be better on future versions as well. The climbing abilities of this bike are unmatched, I think. I can't think of anything else that gives the ability to climb like this does. Now, when I first saw it, I thought it might be a big kind of spongy bike that's not efficient, but couldn't be further from that. When you get on it and start pedaling, everything is really tight and it feels like a solid pedaling platform and you get so much bottom bracket clearance for climbing up stupid things. So I don't like climbing on fire roads. I find them quite boring. So I always try and pick a challenging climb, an off piece thing, something that you would never bother tackling on a regular bike because it would just be impossible. The e-bikes open up loads of different adventure style routes for me. You can even try climbing up downhill trails and you can successfully climb many down trails on this bike. So the climbing ability is fantastic and paired with that Bosch motor, which is so sensitive to your pedal inputs, it's just phenomenal at climbing. And when it comes to going down, it's, it's 190 mil travel. It's like bottomless in terms of the feel. But again, it's a progressive platform. It doesn't like blast through all the travel. You can definitely use up all the stroke. I've got the O-ring off the shock a lot of times, but you don't feel it. There has never been a moment where I felt that I've bottomed out the travel. So 29, 29, 190, 190, it's just incredible going down. Now, a few people have messaged me and asked me if that bottom bracket height is an issue in cornering. And honestly, I don't find it an issue whatsoever. As long as your pedals are level, you can just push it through the corners and it tips in like so quick and easy. And I would rather have this bottom bracket height than a lower one because it gives loads of pedal clearance. And in fact, I think it tips in just as quick or if not quicker than most other bikes I've ridden. So the geometry on it is fantastic. It's slack, it's got a steep seat angle, it's 29, 29. It's got a fairly decent sized chain stay, which means the bike feels really balanced for me 
in my size, which is 190 centimeters roughly. And actually when you're just riding along, I do find it a really comfortable pedaler. Now it's not perfect, don't get me wrong. There's no bike that is perfect. Just like many things in this world, there's things that I think could be improved. Now it is 190 travel made of aluminum. So 24.7 is not bad in the slightest, but if I'm wishing for things that I think could be better, uh, a lighter overall weight I think would be really cool. And I don't like the Bosch remote. I don't like the fact that it's got a key on it either. I hate those keys. I just keys on e-bikes should be banished and like forbidden to be on e-bikes because I just lose them. That's on me, but I don't like keys on e-bikes. But the rest of the bike and the way it rides and the build quality and the construction and the fact that I think it can last a long time with the massive bearings in it, I just think that it's a bike that is built to last a long time and it's a bike that's built to do pretty much anything. So for me, there's so many boxes that it ticks and I really like the look of it. I think it's fantastic that people either love it or hate it because people have an opinion on this. And when you're riding it and when you put it down by the coffee shop, everyone looks at this bike and everyone's curious to learn a little bit more about it. And I like that about it. It feels a bit different in a sea of bikes that are very, very similar in terms of look and aesthetics and geometry. This is an outlier and I like that about it. And that's why I'm gonna buy one of these myself with my own money. I like it that much. So I'm gonna be riding one of these for 2023 and I'll use it for like testing other pieces. But I think Pole have made an outstanding, outstanding electric mountain bike. And I can't get enough of this bike and I can't wait to ride it some more. Let me know any questions you've got, pop them down below. I'll be happy to help out and answer. And yeah, hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been fantastic to make this. I loved riding it and I think we got some epic shots and let me know with a thumbs up if you like it and uh, catch you soon.